Uh, good morning from the Portuguese family. I'm in uh, Vila do Conde and today I'm walking the connecting route from Vila do Conde from the coastal route of the Portuguese Camino to the central route to Hartes, how they call it in Portuguese or Raids, I think how most uh, foreigners call the town, uh, which is on the central Camino. Uh, well, I just got a map. This is Tourist Information Office here in Vila do Conde on the uh, street uh, Cinco de Abril, uh, 5th of April, the name of the street. And well, they gave me this map. Yes, and it sounds like it's a 12 kilometer walk, so which is quite short because I thought it would be longer. And well, the route is marked, at least that's what they told me here at the uh, information office. And yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to the bridge. You walk across the bridge to get to Villa de Conte, but uh, the split is actually uh, just after the bridge, after crossing the bridge. If you want to continue on the coastal route, you uh, walk straight through the town. If you want to switch to the central route, after crossing the bridge, you turn right and walk along the river, where I'm going to go right now. Well, uh, I'm on a bridge right now that you cross to get to, to Villa de Conte, and uh, the bridge is pretty much on the Camino way. You can see the route marking well and there's the straight arrow pointing that way through the town it is uh, the the coastal route and uh, this arrow pointing to the right it points to the central route you can see that the route goes along the river where I'm gonna head right now it's a little bit the traffic is really really heavy here which is surprisingly for such a small town but well maybe it's because of this holiday that's happening here this weekend maybe there are many people here uh, about 300 meters uh, after the bridge uh, don't <laughs> miss the turns uh, don't follow the, the river rather take a left street and you can see on the top of the wall here there is a Camino sign saying uh, Camino, Camino Central, which means it's a central route. Uh, for uh, about 700 meters, I haven't seen any Camino sign or arrow, anything. Maybe I don't see them. Maybe they're on the other side somewhere on the ground. Well, I just follow the map and I'm walking on the Avenida Bernardino Machado, which is this street. And on the map, uh, they marked me that street as, uh, as the Camino route. So I will just stick to it. And hopefully, oh, I think, yeah, I think there might be a yellow arrow there. Yay, there is a yellow arrow. Yeah, here it is, you see? I'm on the right way. The, the, that's where the street ends. And now I'm gonna go right. And you can actually see there are some really worn off yellow arrows. I think there's another one. And there's a sticker. So I think that just that the the the, the uh, signs there have been refreshed in, in a couple of years. That's why uh, it, it it looks like or feels like the route is not marked at all. But if I look really really carefully, I can see here and there like a yellow paint. I think yeah, for some reasons they just haven't remarked the route again. Uh, after a thorough ride, now the Camino goes through this sort of industrial area, which I really don't like. But I don't think it's uh, it's for long. Probably the end is just there around the corner. No yellow arrows, but there is a is a sticker with the Camino scallop. Uh, I guess I'm on the right way. This is a quite surprisingly for me because. I, for some reason, thought that this route is very popular because many people choose to walk out of Porto following the literal way, the route that goes along the coast. And then uh, those who want to walk the central route, they switch from Villa do Conte and walk to Hates. But yeah, it's surprisingly, if there are many people walk the route, how badly the route is marked. Yes, you, you can see that's what I'm talking about. There is like a yellow arrow, but it's it's completely washed off. And there is another one on the next pole. 
it's not that clear either. Well, I guess clear enough to indicate that I should just keep going straight. There's a snack bar. Sabor is the terra and it has a Camino Shell sign. So and I guess yeah, that's another sign that you're in the right way. Uh, people often ask about walking on the road on the Camino and then on this particular route it's, it's just difficult to classify because you are sort of walking on the road but it's like it's a street in a town with no sidewalks so that's uh, that's how people, you can see that people's doors, they open right on the road it's, uh, you, you often can see it in Portugal and well I, 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 I don't really know how to classify that because there's not much traffic and it's actually a town but just there are no sidewalks on the, on the street so, uh, well, if it's walking on the road or just walking on the street, so it's difficult, but since it's a very quiet road, so I just would say, well, no, it's not really road walking. Oh, this is a bit of an unpleasant part because the road is very narrow and there are no sidewalks and you walk just between the, the walls. And there's some traffic, but you can see while the guy is cleaning his feet, so probably it's not that dangerous to walk here. Won't you? Yeah. Uh, like, uh, luckily, luckily, it was a very short stretch of the of, of the road, and well, not even a hundred meters, maybe fifty meters. And here I am walking to another another town. Uh, here I again just follow the main street without turning off anywhere. I saw another faded Camino error. I think I, I still haven't I think I'm sure I'm still in the right way. And yes, just stick to the main street. There is a split, there are actually three routes that go in different directions. And I see there there is a yellow cross. I guess it's not the left one. Now figure out if it's the one that goes straight or if it's the one that goes right. I think ah oh, this is the error. This is you see it's really again like a washed off dilapidated error but pointing to the right. Ah there is a Kanye! Ah this is so nice, it's the first official Camino sign I see since I left Villa de Conde. And I walked almost five kilometers but it is really nice. I'm so happy. So make sure you, you you notice the sign and turn in the right direction. Yeah, I, th I, uh, I think that's the bridge that the lady from the previous town told me. So she just told me to go all the way straight, following the main street until I reach the bridge. And the small bridge, turn right, which I did. And there was even a Camino sign. And there are now uh, more more Camino arrows, and you can uh, even see them. So that is really nice. I hope now all the way to Patis I will be able to follow the Camino signs easily. Oh, this is such a beautiful place. Wow. <laughs> I was so focused on, on finding the arrows that I almost missed this, this beautiful view here. I don't know what happened, but from that turn off and from the official sign, I see the yellow Camino arrows painted everywhere. So now hopefully it will be it will be easier to navigate and I don't have to pay that much attention to, to the arrows and I can enjoy more of the scenery which is quite nice Wow, look at these beautiful houses the pink one is all covered in flowers There is another short stretch like this, walking on the road with basically no shoulders uh, between two walls. <laughs> but luckily there are very few cars, as you can see. And it's very short, the end is just there, it's again maybe 50 meters. Not that bad. And uh, if you look around, it is, it is beautiful. Unfortunately, yellow, yellow arrows <laughs> magically disappeared again. Yes, uh, 
since I walked into this town and I just walk again on the main street straight assuming that's the right way and there are arrows again here too on the back of the side of the sign and there is one yellow arrow on the wall all pointing towards the church there's a beautiful church unfortunately it's closed so I can't get in I'm just gonna enjoy the, the, the view from the outside well this is so far uh, the most unpleasant I think part because this is on the road the road is very narrow it's not enough even space to, for two cars to drive past and well obviously there are no sidewalks or shoulders uh, approaching a bridge and I'm not sure I see there is some there's a trail that goes down on the right through the fields but I have a feeling that the Camino just goes straight yes exactly there's an there's a, on the metal side there is a yellow arrow so the Camino just goes across the bridge even uh, uh, even the, the bridge you can see it's quite a big road, it's very quiet and if I look down there, it's a highway and there are barely any cars as well so maybe I'm just it's just the time of the day or it's the day of the week that it is not much traffic and well, it's possible that if you walk this part, this route on Monday morning that you get, will get uh, quite a bit of traffic uh, which will make the walk unpleasant I've walked uh, 9.2 kilometers uh, and I think I'm arriving in Arcos and it is a small town on the central route so now from Arcos I'll just walk on the central route to Hartes it's very nice to be on the, on the main Camino route again because there are just signs everywhere and there is a map can see. Let's check. I'm here right now in Arcos and I'm walking today to San Pedro de Artes. And finally I get to walk through real countryside with some well, compost fields on both sides which adds up a bit of a smelly. What makes the, the walk a little bit smelly but at least it's quiet and it's on a well on a road on a road with no cars on cobblestone if you walk a central route of the Portuguese Camino you'll get this with cobblestones everywhere quite a lot uh, walking from Villa de Condo to uh, Arcos uh, I think I saw only one or two pilgrims but once now nah, I'm on the, on the central route you can see there are quite a few people uh, I think I've already seen 10 people and I walked on the route only maybe one kilometer. Good morning again from the Portuguese Camino. Uh, here I am again at, uh, at the bridge, you can see, in Vila do Conde. And well, yesterday I walked the, the river route from Vila do Conde to Hates and I was not really planning to walk um, another route but I saw yesterday on the way back to Villa du Conde driving many pilgrims walking on the on so-called aqueduct route uh, which is supposed to have less road walking than the river route well actually I didn't have much road walking on the river route either but yeah I decided okay if many people prefer the aqueduct route I'm gonna walk it to compare both routes and to see if it's actually much better than the river route or not so you can see yesterday uh, to follow the river route to San Pedro de Hats I turned right here and walked a little bit along the river and then took one of the streets that goes left uh, today well the only thing it sounds like the aqueduct route is not really well marked so I uh, I have a Camino app on my phone that I, I've never used any apps before to walk with any Camino routes 
but it sounds like that route is not marked. So I will, I'm gonna be using the app. And, well, yes, I'm a bit surprised because today is actually Saturday. It's 7.30 in the morning on Saturday. And there are so many cars, so much traffic in the town, in Villa de Conde. Very strange. Yesterday on Friday, it was Friday and it was pretty much the same. There was really a lot of traffic. So, back to the, to the connecting route, to the aqueduct road. It seems like you have to go a little bit through the town first. Well, you can see it just first never stop, which is really strange for, for a start of the morning. In a, in a, not in a very big town. And, well, I'm going to use the app because the, the route is marked on the app. And I hope that I will find some maybe Camino signs along the route. Well, let's go and see. Put into the app uh, that I'm following from this main street after the bridge. I have to take the street, the stairs up, Calzada de San Francisco. Uh, the street uh, leads to a monastery, I think, and a cemetery. Don't see any any Camino signs pointing the the way though. So I'm not sure. Uh, if it's, uh, this route is an option to walk, if you don't have an app, or oh, I'm not sure if the app is, oh yeah, yeah, yay, yeah. there is a yellow arrow. Okay, there we go. And you can see the street goes up to the aqueduct, Santa Clara aqueduct. That's why the route is called the aqueduct route. Oh, it's another arrow. So on the app it says that the, the route is not marked, well, it's not marked with official signs, but it's surely marked with yellow arrow. Oh, it's a beautiful aqueduct. Oh, finally I'm away from all the traffic on the main street and now it's, it is quiet. It actually, it does look like a Saturday morning. Aqueduct, I guess that's the, like the old monastery. So, uh, from uh, after walking up the stairs, I turned left and I'm walking along the aqueduct on the left side of it, and I can see now the yellow arrow. So, the cemetery is on the, on the right, and the aqueduct is on the right. And on the left is just a wall, and I'm walking along the street. So luckily there are no <laughs> turns, doesn't look like there are any turns coming soon, so I just can keep walking straight here. Yeah, yeah so you basically walk all the way, well, pretty much to the dead end, to that road, and then you turn left, there is a yellow arrow pointing in the direction. Okay, so far I think I'm managing good without the app. Haven't opened it yet, but... Uh, I, I think the, the easiest way to put it how to walk out of uh, Villa do Conde following the aqueduct route from that Calzada de San Domingo, I think it was the name of the street with the stairs, once you get up you just follow the aqueduct and then there is a part where you can't because there is a road and a fence so just walk around, get back to the aqueduct and walk along, continue walking along the aqueduct with, the, with it being on your, on your right side at the end of the second stretch of the aqueduct here at the Escola Superior de Hotelleria e Turismo you turn right again no 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 Camino signs but uh, <laughs> maybe it is still coming so I just walked uh, past that that college on the street oh boy there's an echo echo here yay and well, uh, through a small village until I got to this to this crossing, and the, the highway is on the top, so I can cross on the, here safely. And here I am back to the aqueduct. I think with the loop I put uh, 
about 700 meters extra. So I guess they assume that you just have to cross from that side, you see of the road to this side, but the road is actually like a highway. Well, now it doesn't look like there are too many cars, but when I got there, there were really many cars and there is no pedestrian crossing. And <laughs> there's sort of like a cars coming from around the corner. They can't even see you. So I just thought it was not really safe to cross in that place. There's another car coming. Oops. And well, yeah. So this again, uh, you just keep uh, to the aqueduct. Maybe if you're lucky and well, you walk. I don't know, different time of the day, but the thing is just, I'm walking actually on Saturday morning. It's 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 8 a.m. on Saturday, and there is quite a bit of traffic. So I'm not sure when you, you should walk, that you get very little traffic, that you can safely cross the road. So I crossed it, I, as I said, I just turned right at that, at that side and walked past the uh, college and a small village until uh, there was a tunnel that I could cross the road safely. And then I turned around and walked back to the aqueduct. It's, uh, I think I put uh, uh, around 700 meters extra, as I said. But if you follow the app, they uh, cross the road uh, in a different place. Mm, I think, well, which way, I'm not sure if, if how, how much longer is that way, but maybe it's a more logical thing to do. Okay, now I just saw an, a Camino arrow again, and I keep following the, this beautiful aqueduct. Walking through a small kind of village neighborhood, still uh, along the aqueduct, there's just yeah, it's a hat more. I think it's almost finished. So what I really like about this route, the aqueduct route, which is quite obvious that you get to walk along this beautiful aqueduct for pretty much from the from the, its beginning in Villa do Conde all the way to the end. On the on the river route, you walk out of the town through the neighborhoods, and then you just sort of. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, can carry on walking through uh, villages and towns, uh, a little bit of countryside. Well, let's see how this will turn. Uh, just to compare, let me show that now I'm walking on this quiet road. Well, it was, <laughs> I had roads like this on the, on the river route as well. And you see there's actually quite driving behind. Super fast, but I think it's a sort of a residential area, which is a speed limit for over 60. But still, they're driving quite fast. Um, so, uh, until up to now, I'm not really sure if the aqueduct road, from a traffic point of view and then and, and a safety point of view, is any better than the river route. Because what, what, what I see, it looks just like the other one, except that uh, I walked out of the town through um, quiet neighborhoods and on the aqueduct route, you walk out of the town uh, following the aqueduct. I had exactly stretches like this yesterday on the river route, where it, it is a road, but you see, but it goes through, through town. It's, not much traffic and you walk there is no sidewalk you sort of walk between the walls well they are like exactly exactly the same stretches on uh, on the other route so i guess you still walk through the same area of portugal so the towns are very similar and well you just can't get away from walking on the, on, on on those quiet roads as for route marking i'd say uh, uh, both routes are marked quite similar, not not perfectly. So, uh, but I can't. I wouldn't say that the river route, as being the official uh, connecting route, is marked better, any better than the than the aqueduct route. Actually, now at this point, I see more yellow arrows. On the on the on the river route, there were very few arrows, and the, most of them they were really faded or washed off. And again. Look, that's how I walk through a town on this street slash road and, well, you can see it, there are quite a few cars driving by. Uh, 
uh, well, at seven kilometers just past the bar, uh, you have to turn right. There is actually a yellow arrow. You can't really see it very clear from the from the road, but yes, here it is. You again. <laughs> now you walk under there. This, this uh, the aqueduct is just a really small part of it here. Walking through this nice small town on on the road, on the street, with no sidewalks. Finally, after nine kilometers on cobbles, I get to walk on, on a footpath, which feels really nice for the change. Yellow arrow. Oh, uh, I haven't seen a Camino sign in, a, in some time. Well, the last one was a point to turn right, which I did. And after that, I haven't seen one arrow. There were a couple of splits, but I just keep walking sort of on the, on the main, well, following the main street. And I think that San Pedro de Arts should be somewhere not far away. I just, I just follow the cobblestone street uh, till I reach this the highway A7, and well now it's uh, it's left towards uh, Artis. And I must say, I've actually uh, walked more than I thought I would because uh, it said it's about 12 kilometers on this route to to Artis, and I've walked already over 12 kilometers, and I think it's about another one kilometer to, to the town. Uh, you can see I, uh, I'm approaching uh, Hatis, but I'm still on the Alcuidoc route. And well, you can see walking on the sidewalk next to the road with, with quite a lot of traffic. On the side of the morning, by the way. I, I still haven't seen a one Camino sign. Uh, I just I just took out the, my phone and checked on Google Maps where where is where the town is. And I remember this part because yesterday I walked to to Hatis on the river route and we drove back from there to Villa de Conde. And well, on this street and I saw quite a few pilgrims walking. So that's why I uh, I'm almost sure that that's the right route. Well, here I am at the some sort of uh, uh, intersection after walking for about two kilometers, I think, with no signs or errors. I see that there is a there is an official Camino sign and an arrow, and another side as well. You see the the metal one. Um, well, I just better cross the road probably first. Okay, and well, that's the sign. I. Uh, gonna follow this route that goes to right now there are many 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 Camino signs which is really nice <laughs> well now at least I know about a kilometer before the town that I'm on the right way uh, I was actually mistaken thinking that the, the aqueduct road route uh, gets to the central uh, route of the Portuguese Camino one kilometer before Hartes uh, not really, it goes completely on a, on, a, on a different road and I think it, uh, it, it gets to the central route once uh, you, you are in, in, in Hartis. Uh, you can see that it's last, I think, two kilometers to, to the town uh, uh, on, on this road. And down there I can see the church of Hartis, so I'm almost in the town, maybe in other kilometer or even less. Uh, here I am in, in San Pedro de, de Hates. That's the that's a church. And well uh, I walked just over 15 kilometers uh, on the, on the aqueduct route which is two kilometers longer than uh, my walk on the river route yesterday. I just finished walking at the um, 
two uh, routes that connect the the coastal route with the central route from uh, Villa do Conde to Hartes, San Pedro de Hartes. And well, I, I walked both routes uh, back to back. So on Friday, I walked um, the river route and on Saturday, I walked the aqueduct route. So um, what uh, what can I say, my opinion? So first, uh, I, I was, before I walked them, I, I was under the impression that the, the river route is uh, uh, has a lot of walking on the road with a lot of traffic and the aqueduct route it's a really quiet and uh, route with no with no traffic at all, with no roads and through the countryside. So uh, after walking both of them, I can't say that I didn't really see that big a difference. The only thing on the on the river route, I uh, did have to walk a little bit, about five hundred meters, on a on a highway, but it had quite a wide shoulder. It, it was just over the bridge uh, just before Arcos, just before the route gets to the to the central route of the Portuguese Camino. But uh, it was on Friday morning and I had, there were no cars at all on that highway. And well, uh, when you walk over the bridge, there is actually a sidewalk. So you don't really walk on the highway itself. So uh, the other thing uh, was that the river route it is a well. It is a official route because, the, at least according to the tourism information office in Villa do Conde, I went there before to ask about different routes uh, to to walk to the uh, from the coastal route to the central route, and they told me that the the route that goes along the river, uh, well, uh, it's the official route, and the, there are other routes that they're not really marked. So uh, it's a different thing that I had before I walked. I had an impression that the the river route is well marked and the, the aqueduct route is not marked or marked very poorly. Well, uh, and in fact, I can't say that the river route marked re- really well. The, all, the, the, the thing is just that with, the, with that route, it's, it's much easier to follow it because I think in the whole um, 13 kilometers that I walked, I think I had to turn three, two or three times. So it's pretty much you just walk, uh, follow one one street, one road through towns, countryside, till you go over the bridge and get to Arcos, where you start walking on the central road. With the aqueduct road, uh, there were parts that were really well marked with many arrows, and then there were some parts for like a kilometer or two kilometers when there was no road marking at all, and there were several turns, and well, uh, I sort of... I uh, had some time to take my uh, phone and check on Google Maps if I was still heading in the right direction. But after like a kilometer or two, the route marking would start again. So, um, yes, so that is, uh, I think it just just the uh, aqueduct route has more, more turns and you have to really f- uh, keep a track when the river route is quite straightforward. Well, as for the scenery, I really enjoyed walking out of uh, Villa do Conte to follow in the, along the aqueduct, which is the, the aqueduct route. It goes just along the aqueduct for first probably three, four kilometers, which is really nice because the river route, uh, it goes through quiet well, neighborhoods of the town. It's not nothing really, no, no industrial areas, nothing in particular unpleasant, but just the aqueduct, the walking in next to this. Uh, impressive aqueduct is, is just nicer. Um, f- as for the scenery in general, I actually liked the um, like towns and villages on the river route more because on uh, most of the time on the aqueduct route, you walk uh, sort of between the high walls. You can't even see houses on both sides, which was a little bit little bit boring at the t- at sometimes. Yeah, and um, the distance, the distance on the river route was from, from the bridge in Villa do Conde to, to the church uh, in San Pedro de Hartes was 13 kilometers. When on the aqueduct route, uh, it was 15 kilometers. So it's a two kilometers difference. Well, you, <laughs> you decide if it's worth it or not. But uh, overall, I think if you just want to walk an easy route, 
uh, I'd rather recommend taking the um, the river route. Well, the name, by the way, the river route. It it, it sort of it, it it starts at the river, but of the three hundred meters, it goes away from the river, and that pretty much <laughs> that, that as much river as you get on the route. If you want to explore uh, and, and, uh, the, the aqueduct, uh, maybe yes, I would recommend then walking on the aqueduct route. But uh, sometimes the route marking is not really it's, it's it's not that good. And sometimes, like at one uh, point when you leave Villa do Conte, uh, the yellow arrows lead you to the highway, and there is no road crossing. So you're just in the highway, and then they start again on the other side of the highway. So I, I don't recommend you to try to run across that highway because the, there is a lot of traffic. And even if there is no traffic, the cars go very fast, 120 kilometers or faster. That driving in Portugal is quite, a, quite hectic sometimes. And well, even if you try to just, just go and run over the, over the, across the highway, it's 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 really it's not a good idea. So I had to uh, do an extra loop of seven hundred meters, so to get to the um, tunnel to cross the highway and get back to the aqueduct. Yes, so that is that is it. And well, um, I've written a detailed post with GPX track files and then maps and some explanations on on each route comparing both routes and, well, giving more details. Uh, uh, it is it is up to you which route to walk, but I just want to say that the, the river route, it is not as bad as I thought it would be in, in, in terms of, of traffic and walking on the road.